Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. The only thing we lack are two things. Likes and subscribers. Despite the title, 1976's Creature from Black Lake is not a Creature from the Black Lagoon ripoff. It's a Bigfoot movie. There's never been a report or an incident of this creature ever attacking or harming a human being. Doesn't sound very dramatic. Yeah! That's better. What this situation needs are a couple of college students. Big creature, here we come. I asked you not to call me that. Reeves and Pahu, Pahu are keen to find out if Bigfoot is really out there somewhere, living, hunting, watching you pee. Hi. Not sure this is better. They want to speak to Joe Canton, whose mate was killed, and ask around town. Listen, uh, we're a couple of college students who are doing research. Both of me. Canton is played by Western stalwart Jack Elam, and he doesn't like people making jokes about Bigfoot. Little Willie don't think it's funny, and I don't think it's funny. Little Willie is what I call my fist. They also meet Orville. That's how the creature. Back when he was a kid. <laughs> Apparently the shock made his hair curl. His parents were killed in the encounter, but he takes the students back to meet his grandpa. Played by Western stalwart Dub Taylor. Yeah, we don't want nobody snooping around here making us look like a bunch of dumb rednecks. Who invites them to dinner, but they are not to mention the creature as his wife is still traumatized. <laughs> Was that it? Was that it? Was that the creature? On the one hand, idiot. On the other, was that it? No, that was just our mule. I'd say there was something wrong with your mule, but I have no idea what a mule sounds like. They are relegated to the barn for the night. Wonder why. Oh, that can't be normal. Take that poor mule to the vet. <laughs> I don't know what you find so funny. That time was Bigfoot. I couldn't tell the difference, but maybe if I heard it played again, suddenly and loudly in a crowded diner. Wonder why. Jackass. I've got nothing all over me. <laughs> Somehow the idiots have impressed the local girls. I believe I just fell in love. I can only assume Bigfoot has eaten all of the local men as the girls agree to meet them at their campsite later. Well, since we're out here with Mother Nature, Want to do what comes natural? <laughs> that seems to confirm it. All the local men must be dead. Ready for the north to meet the south? But, as is traditional in this situation, Bigfoot has developed an unhealthy interest in human courtship. Mm, smell of wood. <laughs> Let's kill it for science. To get this junk all packed up and get out of here, understand? Unfortunately, one of the girls is the sheriff's daughter. What an hilarious interlude. Meanwhile, at Joe Canton's shack, little note for any directors watching, when it comes to set dressing, do not include a lynched doll unless you want to establish your character as a psychopath. No reason, just how he decorates. After this close encounter, Canton heads to the sheriff. Yeah, yeah. Swear I seen the creature and he damn near come into my house, go! <laughs> Have you been drinking? Oh, what makes you think that? He's put in the same cell as our leads, so they finally get to meet the man they've been looking for. I want to shake your hand. I wouldn't. After their release, Canton tells his story. And I smell something. Turned out to be me. I don't know what kind of a creature it takes to eat his way through a whole herd of wild boars. But I like its style. Camping near Canton's place, the guy's search continues. But... Please! This thing's empty! Please! Okay, all right, I'll go to the handle Winning the Dark Corners Scooby-Doo Award for wafer-thin reasons to unnecessarily and ill-advisedly split up. Reeves prepares to defend himself against the creature, and... Can we 
agree this is something of a tonal shift? A uh, Bigfoot pulled a knife. I could itemize the problems with this movie. The characterization is basically Pa Who Doesn't Like Chicken. We had chicken fried, barbecued, stewed, skewered. The fact that it veers from slapstick <laughs> to accidentally stabbing your friend. But it all comes under the big looming umbrella of I don't know what this film is about. You gotta be kidding. Two men go to find Bigfoot. They kind of do, but not to their satisfaction. They learn nothing, affect no one, and change in no way. I was wrong about you and your friend. How? And even if we generously call that a plot, most of what happens has nothing to do with it. I'm getting an image of writers staring at a 30-minute script going, I don't know how people make these things 90 minutes. Should we add some girls? Yeah, that'll kill some time. I suddenly don't feel like talking about any creature. How about they have an unmotivated argument about beans? All right. Go ahead and make jokes. You stupid. Great, but they'll have to make up again 90 seconds later. Want some beans, buddy? How about someone watches him pee? Hi. None of it has anything to do with anything. That's why there are these tonal shifts, because it feels as if an hour of the movie was added afterwards. It's 15 minutes before they even arrive at the town. Well, it shouldn't be long now. I'd call it padding, but there's nothing to pad. Here we go! <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please accidentally stab the like button. This is very similar to Boggy Creek 2, but without the disturbing shorts. Which do you prefer? Let us know in the comments below. I'm gonna make a rug out of that damn thing. Sure stinks in here.